Hey, and welcome back. We're gonna be talking about buttons. Now, buttons are a really important part of any UI. I mean, they're not only used for forms, but can be used to link users to other parts of the site or within the same page. We should treat buttons with a lot of care, and I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do to make your buttons that much better. So let's jump right in. So what do we have here? We have a nice little submit button. Now, buttons should describe the action you want the user to take. And I think submit and cancel are, you know, they're okay in most technical applications, but they usually feel way too dry or generic. Now, consider using words like sign up or send information or create account. I mean, those are much better options. I'm just gonna change this to create account. And it's just a much more descriptive, or you can say a ac more action-based word or a uh, more action-based copy. Now, this also helps you emphasize the value of completing a certain action. We want our users to keep motivated. And a way we can do that is to remind the user of the benefits with completing this flow. So try something like sign up and, you know, or something like create account, just be more descriptive instead of just using something generic like submit. Now we do have sign up down here. And like I said, like sign up's a pretty good option. I like it. Now consider writing in the first person. This is another option. It really depends on the tone you're going for with your brand and like your entire UI and your UX. Now the button is that final interaction that takes a user elsewhere. There's times where you can try making it personable. It has been proven that buttons that use words like I, me, or my have higher conversion rates. Instead of sign up, why don't we try something like create my account. I think that sounds a little bit better. A little trick I use is that whatever the copy is in the button, I will precede that by I, like I want to. So it makes grammatical sense. I want to create my account. This is what I would do if it matches the tone of what you're going for. But I mean, isn't necessarily limited to that. I think being personable and, you know, combining that with what we learned before about having more descriptive and action-based words uh, just makes your buttons that much better. So you remember this scenario, right? Differentiating between buttons. Usually you should have a primary and a secondary button. You may need to use two buttons at certain points and it happens quite a lot and you should come up with a primary and secondary that are easily distinguishable. The rule is that buttons that function differently should appear differently. So remember to make the primary button that should take the user to the expected path should be much more prominent. So in this case, Something like that works like we saw before. But when a user is on mobile, you should make buttons easily tappable. I think 40 pixels to 48 pixels is a good height for a button, especially on mobile. And it works really well with using a base unit of eight pixels. Remember, keep them easily distinguishable. And also remember that when you're on mobile, you need to have a bigger tappable area, just so you don't necessarily have something like this. And when you're on mobile, it's just, it's not fun <laughs> to try and tap something like that. You may actually tap the cancel by accident. So try to avoid doing anything like that. 40 to 48 pixels is generally a good rule of thumb. Now, there are times where, you know, I would use a clear all. I mean, I've been guilty of doing this a couple of times. So if you have a set of filters that you need to apply, you may want the user to be able to reset everything. Or if there's a large form, sometimes people, I don't know why you would do that, but I've seen it before in terms of like a resetting or a clear all on a form. You, you should probably try and avoid using some sort of like reset button like this. Um, it, users rarely use this and it's kind of vulnerable to being clicked accidentally. This results in frustration, data loss, and possible abandonment. So what I would do here is just keep it to view results. But it also depends on the use case as well. So if you find that your users use your product in a way where they're constantly adding and removing a bunch of content, then it may make sense. I could see that being used for like a CRM tool. It's like an internal tool for a team to use to search up users or search up like uh, clients or something like that. And they want to easily add and remove filters and 
they just do it on a day-to-day -day basis. So it may help them with their day-to-day -day flow, but a user that's coming to a website and just adding filters, like to search for like rentals or something like that, typically they would be more inclined to change those filters manually rather than lose all their filter changes in one go. So keep that in mind when you are designing longer forms or filters or something like that. And the last one I have here is disabled. Now this isn't disabled, but consider having a disabled button for your user. A disabled button is a good, it's really good for cases where a user can't progress unless they fill out all required fields. So in this case, what I would typically do with a disable button, here, let's, uh, let's make the background color like, uh, maybe like 30%. Or something. Yeah, that's that's fine. So we have a 30% on the background color and the foreground for the text would be something like 75%. Uh, Maybe that's a little too much. We can do something like 50%. Uh, we can even go even lower. We can do 25. Yeah, this looks like a good disabled submit button. And like this usually comes in handy when you're doing stuff like uh, credit card information or even entering um, login information, registration based information. So keep that in mind. Your users may be more inclined to uh, actually fill out all the required information rather than rushing to submit and then seeing errors everywhere. Make sure to test this with uh, your target users whenever you can. And that's it for best practices for buttons.